Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie, and today we are on day 274. Welcome to the channel. I am so happy that you're here today. We are going to be reading out of 1 Kings chapter 12, Ezekiel chapter 29, Hebrews chapter 5, and then we'll close out the day with Psalm 139, but we're only reading verses 5 through 10 today. So let's get started with 1 Kings chapter 12. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When Jer uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was yet in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam lived in Egypt, and they sent and called him. Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, your father made our yoke difficult. Now therefore make the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter, and we will serve you. He said to them, Depart for three days, and then come back to me. So the people departed. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, what counsel do you give me to answer these people? And they replied, If you will be a servant to this people today, and will serve them, and answer them with good words, then they will be your servants forever. But he abandoned the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. He said to them, What counsel do you give? that we may answer these people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke that your father put on us lighter. The young men who had grown up with him said to him, Tell these people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make it lighter for us. Tell them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king asked, saying, Come to me again the third day. The king answered the people roughly and abandoned the counsel of the old men which they had given him and spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, my father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king didn't listen to the people, for it was a thing brought, out, uh, brought about from Yahweh that he might establish his word, which Yahweh spoke by Ahiah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king didn't listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? We don't have an inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, Israel. Now see to your own house, David. So Israel departed to their tents. But as for the children of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then king Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the men subject to forced labor, and all Israel stoned him to death with stones. King Rehoboam hurried to get himself up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against David's house to this day. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was no one who followed David's house except for the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and eighty thousand chosen men who were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, 
Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Yahweh says, You shall not go up or fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. Everyone return to his house, for this thing is from me. So they listened to Yahweh's word, and returned and went their way according to Yahweh's word. When Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived in it, and he went out therefore from there and built Penuel, Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will return to David's house. If this people goes up to offer sacrifice in Yahweh's house at Jerusalem, then the heart of the people will turn again to their Lord even to Rehoboam, the king of Judah, and they will kill me, and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold, and he said to them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Look, and behold your gods Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. He set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. This thing became a sin, for the people went even as far as Dan to worship before the one there. He made houses of high places and made priests from among all the people who were not of the sons of Levi. Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like the feast that is in Judah, and he went up to the altar. He did so in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar which he had made in Bethel on the fifteenth day in the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel, and went up to the altar to burn incense. That is a shame. All right. Ezekiel chapter 29. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. Speak and say, the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great monster that lies in the middle of his rivers, that has said, My river is my own, and I have made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws, and I will make the fish of your rivers stick to your scales. I will bring you up out of the middle of your rivers, with all the fish of your rivers which stick to your scales. I'll cast you out into the wilderness, you and all the fish of your rivers. You'll fall on the open field. You won't be brought together or gathered. I have given you for food to the animals of the earth and to the birds of the sky. All the inhabitants of Egypt will know that I am Yahweh because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of you by your hand, you broke and tore all their shoulders. When they leaned on you, you broke and paralyzed all their thighs. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will bring a sword on you and will cut off man and animal from you. The land of Egypt will be a desolation and a waste, and then they will know that I am Yahweh. Because he has said, the river is mine and I have made it, therefore behold, I am against you and against your rivers. I will make the land of Egypt an utter waste and desolation from the tower of Sevna even to the border of Ethiopia. No foot of man will pass through it, nor will any animal foot pass through it. It won't be inhabited for forty years. I will make the land of Egypt a desolation in the middle of the countries that are desolate. 
Her cities among the cities that are laid waste will be a desolation forty years. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through the countries. For the Lord Yahweh says, At the end of forty years I will gather the Egyptians from the peoples where they were scattered. I will reverse the captivity of Egypt and will cause them to return into the land of Pathros, into the land of their birth. There they will be a lowly kingdom. It will be the lowest of the kingdoms. It won't lift itself up above the nations anymore. I will diminish them so that they will no longer rule over the nations. It will no longer be the confidence of the house of Israel bringing iniquity to memory when they turn to look after them. Then they will know that I am the Lord Yahweh. It came to pass in the 27th year, in the first month, in the first day of the month, Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyre. Every head was made bald, and every shoulder was worn. Yet he had no wages, nor did his army from Tyre for the service that he had served against it. Therefore the Lord Yahweh says, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He will carry off her multitude, take her plunder, and take her prey. That will be the wages for his armies. I have given him the land of Egypt as his payment for which he served, because they worked for me, says the Lord Yahweh. In that day, I will cause a horn to sprout for the house of Israel, and I will open your mouth among them. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. How many times have we read? How many times in Ezekiel have we read? God speaking. Then they will know that I am Yahweh. Then they will know. Then they will know. Is he still saying that? In 2023, all these things that are happening in the world, then they will know that I am Yahweh. And we are still not listening. Makes me wonder. Hebrews chapter 5. For every high priest, being taken from among men, is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. The high priest can deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray, because he himself is also surrounded with weakness. Because of this, he must offer sacrifices for sins for the people, as well as for himself. Nobody takes this honor on himself, but he is called by God, just like Aaron was. So also, Christ didn't glorify himself to be made a high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. He in the days of his flesh, having offered up prayers and petitions, with strong crying and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and having been heard for his godly fear, though he was a son, yet learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Having been made perfect, he became to all those who obey him the author of eternal salvation, named by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. About him we have many words to say, and hard to interpret, seeing you have become dull of hearing. For although by this time you should be teachers, you again need to have someone teach you the rudiments of the first principles of the revelation of God. 
you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is not experienced in the world of righteousness, for he's a baby. But solid food is for those who are full grown, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. For although by this time you should be teachers, for although by this time you should be teachers, we have all the information. Love God, love people. Everything else will fall into place. Okay, one uh, Psalm 139, verses 5 through 10. You hem me in behind and before. You laid your hand on me. This knowledge is beyond me. It's lofty. I can't attain it. Where could I go from your spirit? Or where could I flee from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shoal, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the dawn and settle in the uttermost parts of the sea, even where your hand will lead me, and your right hand will hold me. Oh, wow. Oh, we are so loved. We are so loved. You hem me in behind and before. We are en enveloped in his love. We just need to receive it. We just need to be held by him. Oh, he loves us so much. So, thank you everybody for stopping by today. Come on back for tomorrow, which will be day 275. Have the most fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.